We talked a little bit over the winter, and now as we get into baseball, about the travel ball phenomenon. Today, we explore it with a travel ball coach. He's been coaching for a long time, and we're going to talk about what are some of the positives of travel baseball. So stay tuned to Clubhouse Gas. Fortunate enough to be joined by Rich Novak, who is the owner of the Sportsorama, but also travel baseball coach now for what five years? That's correct. We're about to start our fifth season. We want to talk about some of the benefits. You know, there's a lot that goes into playing travel baseball. You know, there's a, there's a uh, an investment on the parents' part. There's a time investment on the kids' part. How does it pay off for a kid to play travel baseball? Travel baseball is typically the highest level of baseball around. Um, in Roswell, for example, we've got three levels. You've got the rec league, which is the backbone of the program a select league for kids 9 through 12, and then travel ball, which Roswell starts at age 10. Other parks start earlier, uh, but Roswell starts at age 10. Travel baseball is really for the kid that is uh, um, more competitive, can play at the higher level, and wants to get better, and wants to play more. Doesn't want to play 15, 20 games a year. Doesn't, you know, they want to play 40, 50, maybe even more 60 games a year. Um, those are the kids that when they stick with it, as they keep playing travel baseball, it's because they like the game, because it's a commitment for the kids, there's no question about it, as you said. Uh, but those are the kids that are most likely, and I'm not going to say always, most likely, they're going to be more ready when it comes to going out for their high school team, because they'll have consistently played at a higher level as uh, prior to entering into high school. Now, how do you guys do it? You, you said you have three different divisions. Is there an evaluation process for all the kids, and then they're divided? based on their skill level, or is it a separate registration for each individual thing? It's a separate registration for, for each individual uh, program where parents and kids are deciding where they want to play, where are they most comfortable playing. So for example, my travel baseball team, each year we've, we've had an open tryout. Um, this past year we had 24 kids signed up. Uh, we made a decision, in years past we've kept anywhere from 11 to 13, this year we kept 16 kids. Um, people who want to play travel ball, they sign up, they try out. Uh, if they make the team, great. If they don't make the team, then they have a decision to make. Do I want to drop down and play in a rec league? Do they want to try out for a travel team elsewhere? Uh, one of the things, Casey, that I've been uh, pretty good at doing is, is helping parents that want to still play travel baseball sign up with other teams in the area that may still be looking for kids after our tryout is done. Now. Is there a governing body over, is there, is there a certain league that you guys play with as far as your travel ball, or is it just kind of a go find somebody to play and get into a tournament? Well, there's some of both. Uh, our team plays in Northwest Baseball, and uh, Stan Lewis, uh, who's uh, based in Cherokee, is the guy that really runs Northwest Baseball, and he does a tremendous job, and he simply does it for the love of the kids and, and, and the love of the game. In our age group at 14 under this year, we're going to have close to 30 teams. Uh, some of the other age groups have less. And travel teams can decide at what level they want to play. You can play at the major level, the AAA level, or, or the AA level, just depending on how much you want to play and how competitive your travel ball team is going to be. Now, do you find that your kids play in other leagues while they're playing travel ball? Uh, no. One of the things that, uh, that we say to our kids is that if you're going to play travel ball on our team, and, and my team is by no means unique here, is that you're going to play for our team and that's pretty much it. Now we have some kids who attend a private, a private school on our team and they play for that private school as well but uh, our team tends to be the priority when it comes to where where there's a conflict. However, um, I don't ever want to be the bad guy. I always want kids to be able to play with their friends too and so we've never really had an issue working through those conflicts. How did you deal with rest and pitching? Are you able to keep up with what's going on on both teams? Absolutely. We absolutely keep up with, go with what's going on on both teams, and that really comes from information that we get from the parents. I mean, I'm asking the parents, are they, and it's not just pitching, because we have some kids who catch that are also pitchers, and I don't want a kid catching a game on a Wednesday, pitching a game on a Thursday. The last thing I need to do, or the, you know, most travel coaches are going to fall on this, we don't want to coach the greatest 13, 14 year olds of all time. Right. We want our kids to be able to play for years to come. So I'm a, I'm a dad, I've got a 13 year old kid who I think is special and has got a lot of ability, and I can't decide. 
if I want him to play travel ball or if I'm just going to put him in a normal rec league team. What's your sales pitch to me to, to convince me that, you know what, that kid, in order to, to maximize his potential, needs to play travel ball? What, what I'm going to tell you, what I think most travel coaches are going to tell you, because I'm not going to speak for everybody, but the guys I know that I've been coaching with for years, what I think most travel coaches are going to say to you is this, is that at a certain age, if you want your child to advance, not just competitively, but from a skills perspective, and those skills are going to come from coaching, those skills are going to come from practice time with better players, and game time against better teams. If you, if, if you want your kid to advance, and your kid wants to advance, then you need to step up and play travel baseball because you need to see that more competitive level of baseball otherwise other kids will, will will simply move by it and where you're going to see that is in not necessarily in fielding and throwing but in in pitching and in hitting so if you're just playing rec league and you've never seen a kid who can throw a cut fastball that just runs at your hip and then breaks into the middle of the plate and he goes out for his high school tryout and he sees that and bails the high school coach is going to say, well, does he have the kind of skills to play for me or not? When a kid who's seen that before and understands pitch count, situation, who's on, how many outs, knows how to keep his weight back and react to that kind of pitch, that individual is just going to have more of a step up because they're going to have experienced it more. In doing my research about travel ball, I found a couple of instances where parents talk about the close-knit family that becomes that team. Correct. With the, the parents being together all the time, the kids being together all the time, do you see that in your case? Oh, there's no, there's no question about it. Um, I've had this group of kids, a special group of kids, since, uh, since age 10, which is when we started. And um, of the 16 kids on our team now, six of them were with us back when we started five years ago. Most of the kids on the team this year were on the team last year, and most were on, most were on the year before. And yeah, the parents get very close. Um, you know, we go out after games together, we eat together, we drink together, um, because you're, you're going to be with each other at right. the ball field for the better part of six months. Well, Rich, thank you so much. We really appreciate it, buddy. Good luck Casey, to you this season. thank you. Appreciate That's going to do that. it for us today. We'll see you right back here for another edition of Clubhouse Gas.